I've been thinking recently that a pirate's life could have been very different and would have worked just as well as a story with just the Sea of Thieves characters. And after pondering the story arc, it looks like Flameheart's story was cancelled, or at least substituted. Cast your mind back to 2019, when a pirate's life would have begun its development. The first year of Sea of Thieves had come to an end with Anniversary kicking off the amazing second year. Anniversary launched in April 2019, and we didn't really get anything story based until November, when Flameheart was released in the Seabound Soul. This would have been written as early as the start of the year, and Seabound Soul may have begun development just after Anniversary's launch, which would mean some semblance of a story would have been drafted. What happened? A Pirate's Life would have probably been in the early stages of a deal being struck while Seabound Soul and Heart of Fire were being developed. I have a feeling the devs, instead of having to write a new story, chose to adapt the storyboard for Flameheart to Jack Sparrow and co. Why do I think this? Well, upon looking at the main story beats and the fact Flameheart's story hasn't continued for over a year, then I think we have a strong enough case to argue this. Keep in mind, the theory isn't airtight, but I believe it has merit. Let's start with Tall Tale 1. Apart from the obvious Disney ride opening, this could have very easily have the main story beats replaced with our beloved Sea of Thieves characters. It starts up with us meeting the castaway on the beach, telling us the pirate's life is at stake, with Captain Flameheart planning on decimating the Sea of Thieves for good. And the only one who can save us, Captain Ramsey, has been stuck on the Ferry of the Damned after being bound there through unknown means. We journey to the Sea of the Damned, arriving at Sailor's Grave, and meet the cursed captain as always planned. We eventually do get the rowboat to stow aboard the Ferry of the Damned, where we free Ramsey from the brig. We learn Ramsey has voluntarily locked himself away as Flameheart has learned of a way to return from the Sea of the Damned by using the cane that Ramsey carries. The Burning Blade manages to find us, where we battle it on the Sea of the Damned. We are boarded by the Ocean Crawlers, a gift to Flameheart as a result of his new alliance with the Siren Queen. The Ocean Crawler that steals the greatest pirate treasure in the actual tall tale actually steals the cane from Ramsey and returns it to the Burning Blade, which will allow Flameheart to lose his shackles of the Sea of the Damned. Ramsey falls overboard, lost to the Sea of the Damned. We return to our world and see the castaway again, where she tells us of a ship crewed by someone who might be able to help us. Now Ramsey is out of the picture. She sends us on our way to where the ship was sunk by the Shroud. There is a man aboard the vessel who may know how to defeat Flameheart. We travel westwards and find the debris, diving down into the Sunken Kingdom, until eventually we see it, the wreck of the Silver Blade. We then become lured into the siren structure looking for the crew of the Silver Blade, only to find they were no longer aboard and escaped, while we now have to fight our way out. We make our way through the Sunken Kingdom, as we have before, until we happen upon a ship that the Merfolk have dragged under previously, and we fight the Kraken, as we do in the regular tall tale. Upon reaching the Siren Queen, we see that she had a chest that calls the Kraken, which she stole from the Brig of the Silver Blade and is using it to control the Kraken. We defeat the Siren Queen and destroy the chest, breaking her control over the beast. We return to the castaway with the bad news, that the Captain of the Silver Blade is missing, along with its crew. She then decides we have to try one last time to find Ramsey, and she hands us the necklace with the Reaper's Mark, which will show us the way to Ramsey and we will relive his memories. As a necklace was given to him by Mercia, his loyal friend, it holds the memories of all his adventures. We return to the Sea of the Damned, where we travel through Ramsey's memories, with us witnessing the events of landing at Thieves' Haven, the sinking of the magpie's wing by Flameheart, the betrayal by the Gold Hoarder, and finally, we find him at the Tavern of the Damned, where he's telling stories, once again, of his life. We hand him the necklace, which causes him to remember what it means to be a pirate, with others like Slate, Pendragon, Rose and George, happy to follow Captain Ramsey, the Pirate Lord. We return to camp again, where the castaway is revealed to be Belle, Legend of the Deep, a close friend of the Pirate Lord, which explains how she could travel to the Sea of the Damned and how she knew about the Silver Blade. She tells us Flameheart has called a meeting between his council members and we need to stop him. We find out that Flameheart is indeed working for the captain, as he absconded with his heart, or in this case, his son, using him as a tool for Flameheart to do his bidding. We end up travelling north to the Coral Fortress, where we find the Burning Blade, and we have to repeat the same thing as we did on the Dutchman, playing Who Shall Not Be Returning on his organ. Hell, even the Burning Blade theme is played on an organ in the Ghost Ship event, so you can see the parallels here. We reach the top to find Flameheart discussing his plans to destroy the Sea of Thieves with Wanda, Duke and Stitcher Jim instead of the Gold Hoarder. The ritual begins where we fight Flameheart skeletons and then have a boss fight with Stitcher Jim. The ritual finishes which causes the Spire to rise up. We go back to camp for one final time and we're told we have to defeat Flameheart. We go to the Spire and fight his ghost ships, destroy the Siren statues, then we're accompanied by the Wild Rose, the Morning Star, the Black Witch, and finally Athena's Fortune's ghostly versions to fight Flameheart. We climb up the Spire to find the Chalice of Resurrection, which we destroy, meaning Flameheart can no longer be resurrected. We return to our ship for one final battle with the Burning Blade, defeating Flameheart and the Ferryman finally takes his soul, 
trapping him forever in the Fairy of the Damned after searching for his soul this whole time. The story ends with Bell raising the Silver Blade from the depths, telling us about what it represents, being a ship of freedom and so on and so forth, which we will need in the fights to come. The synopsis took a very short time to piece together as a lot of the lore work and groundwork was already laid out. It mostly fits with the build up from previous tall tales, books and extended universe. I really do feel like this could have worked with just the Sea of Thieves characters with no need for involvement from Pirates of the Caribbean. There are a few issues, like Flameheart allying with the Sirens, but this is remedied by the fact they're corrupted merfolk and not the original ones he swore vengeance on. The use of the Captain and Junior would be a good way to reveal Flameheart was not only acting on his behalf and didn't actually want to sever their immortality from the Sea of Thieves. There are a few issues with the Silver Blade being raised from the depths, as Junior wouldn't be around to captain it. Along with this, there would be some negative space of how Bell became Legend of the Deep, which would have to be filled in, but would tie in nicely with the tales from the Sea of Thieves book. A lot of the plot beats do make sense compared to the Pirates of the Caribbean version though. It's never explained how Davy Jones gets to the Sea of Thieves or even the Sea of the Damned, but Flameheart would already be there looking for Ramsey, which would make sense even when considering a ship is already there. The Silver Blade being in the Siren Kingdom can be explained by the fact Junior sunk in the Shroud, and their domain is located on the edge of the map. The Sirens controlling the Kraken again is explained by the chest that calls the Kraken, which was locked in the brig of the Silver Blade. Tall Tale 3 would be the hardest swap as it's all based off the ride and films apart from up until the end. But Ramsey is pictured there in concept art and he's drinking with some prominent Sea of Thieves characters. Tall Tale 4 again could be like for like apart from a few swaps with Jim for the Gold Hoarder and the Captain would be a more natural fit for controlling Flameheart than Davy Jones, especially due to the Junior ties. It just seems all too neat to me, with the inclusion of the Silver Blade, the Captain, Flameheart Junior, the Sea of the Damned, the Tavern and so on. I could be completely wrong, but this is now what I believe actually happened. Rather than writing a completely fresh story and delaying Flameheart's arc, they just pinched it and adapted it to the crossover project. I've spoken to some other content creators and they're a little miffed about this too, as the story would have been great for Flameheart Senior's arc. I would have preferred they delayed this arc for a year or two to make sure it felt more coherent and clear. Whereas, if you see my other videos, the story is going in a really different direction. Make sure you check those out by the way, they're an interesting watch. Thanks for watching, I really hope you enjoyed the video and if you made it this far, why don't you consider subscribing? It's free, helps me out and you get some awesome Sea of Thieves content each week. Obsidian 6 pack giveaway details are in the pinned comment and hell, why don't you follow me on Twitch where I'll be streaming soon. Thanks again for watching and as always, I'll see you in the next video.